Hi, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Harsh Vinayak, and uh, today I would like to discuss a little bit about automation. Automation, um, uh, I'm sure uh, anyone who has attended uh, seminars, lectures, uh, panel discussions, and I held one the other day, um, has heard that uh, automation is coming. Uh, automation is here. Automation is going to change our life. Automation is going to take our jobs away. Well, let's talk about it a little bit. Automation is not a new word. Automation is not a new word. Um, automation um, has been uh, around since humankind has been around. Uh, in fact, the first tools that we made was a form of automation. Uh, from the stone tools to metal tools, metal age was an automation. I believe the, the single uh, largest or, or I would say important uh, automation period in the history of mankind uh, was in the 18th and uh, or later 18th or 19th century um, where uh, we went on this industrial revolution. So really what happened? What is industrial revolution? What happened was that technology gave us ways and means of harnessing energy and power other than biological power. And by biological power, um, uh, I mean um, horsepower or, or, or human power. Earlier on, while um, the biological power was harnessed to to make products, to deliver services. Uh, for example, in the textile industry, the hand loom. Um, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, with the advent of machines and the advent of water power, uh, steam power, which was really a game changer, um, technology gave to automate um, uh, the, 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 the production of goods uh, the providing of services. And that was transformation. And that transformation was brought about disruptive technology. Disruptive technology is exciting, but it's also scary, isn't it? In fact, there's a story about it. So um, uh, during those days, uh, early, early uh, uh, industrial revolution era, um, one of the inventors of, of looms, of machine looms, uh, came, went to the queen and um, presented his invention, uh, just like we do it, patents, asking for funding. So he presented this, this great invention, the machine loom, which could do the work of hundreds of folks uh, in one go, cheaper, faster, more accurate, better quality all the good things that you would expect from a product. But you know what happened? Queen looks at it and says, wow, this is great. But you know what? I'm not going to fund you. I'm not going to fund you because it's going to take jobs away. Hundreds and thousands of jobs away. So it wasn't funded. But it did stop the invention. It did not stop technology. Eventually, economic pressure caught up. Looms, hand looms were converted uh, to machine looms. Human power was changed for steam power. And we embarked on this journey of industrial revolution. It was automation in its true sense. So automation is not new. Automation has always been with us. What's changed, though, that in those days, uh, in the Industrial Revolution, the automation was on the mechanical front. Now it's on the cognitive front. In fact, uh, the, same, um, the same discussions and talks that happened those days about jobs going away, about people not, not having means to sustain themselves because of machines, because of automation, are the talk of today. But you know what happened it, 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 due, to, um, um, uh, due to the Industrial Revolution? The Industrial Revolution really marks a major turning point in history. 
Almost every aspect of daily life was influenced in some way or shape. In particular, average income and population, and I'm reading this, this is off Wikipedia. Um, in particular, average income and population began to exhibit unprecedented sustained growth. Some economists say that the major impact of the Industrial Revolution was that the standard of living for the general population began to increase consistently for the first time. So far, far from being taker away of job, it was when humankind started increasing their quality of life, started in adding more jobs, um, and in general, uh, started on a journey of progress. Times have changed two, three centuries later. We are the same. Still a little scared, a lot excited about new things, about disruptive technologies. From mechanical now, we are into cognitive space. From, from steam power, we are into internet of things and internet and connectivity and, and automation in how we think, how we interact, how we talk to each other. It is a different world. It's a different space. But I believe that the parameters and the underlying principles remain the same. So before I embark on a philosophical discussion um, of, of where it's taking us, I would like to present a few slides on what we see out there. It's interesting. It's really, really interesting. So um, let me share the slide. It's going to take me a couple of seconds. Uh, let's see. I will be off the screen, but my slide will be on. So let's go to the first slide here. Robot. And not the robot we know, not the C-3PO and R2-D2, which, by the way, everyone is talking about because of the new Star Wars movie. By robot, we mean things that can replace humans in doing certain work. May it be mechanical or may it be cognitive thinking um, or services or products. So robots will definitely touch every aspect of our lives, be it construction and building. And not just touch, it is touching. Be it energy and utilities, metal and mining, apparels. Oh, apparels going back to the Industrial Revolution, the loom days. Retail, the flip carts of the world. Finance, we do not need to go to anyone to get a loan. A robot sits in the background taking our data and approving us. The robot is control of our lives, it seems. Tourism. Government packaging, automotive, big time. So automotive, I believe, was uh, what changed the world of mechanical robots. Uh, when I was in, in, in IIT Kanpur um, 30 years ago, certainly 25, uh, we just started learning about how do you really program a multi-axis robot. Well, today it's ubiquitous. Um, in fact, Tesla, if you go to the Tesla factory uh, and, and look how the cars are being manufactured, there's just one engineer in the whole whole building, whole, whole large factory, and he's not a production engineer. He is a programmer. He's there to see that the robots are working fine. So automotive definitely uh, change the course of robots. Manufacturing, electronics, I mean, really, truly, the miniaturization that we see up to the nano scale is absolutely not possible if it weren't for, for robotics. Um, healthcare. Healthcare is being affected by robotics in a way which has been unprecedented. Uh, microsurgeries are being performed by robots. Um, that would not have been possible earlier on. So it's inescapable 
that robots will touch every aspect of our lives. Let's change slides a little bit. So here um, I have collected from several sources uh, anecdotes. So consider this. Google's voice recognition technology improved from 84% in 2012, merely two years ago, to 98% accuracy today. I believe 98% is about the accuracy that we as humans have, really. We make mistakes in listening to the others, sometimes more. Uh, in fact, a uh, personal example, I mean, if you um, uh, had talked to Siri uh, a year back, um, Siri always, it, it, it did not recognize Indian accent. Perfect. So in two years, technology has changed enormously, and that's a robot. That's automation. IBM Watson. IBM embarked on this project to build a cognitive computing uh, a few years ago, and they named him Watson. Watson today um, is, through its algorithm, able to detect early stage lung cancer with 90% accuracy compared to highly experienced human doctors. Doctors only have a track record of 50%. Does that mean Watson's going to replace the doctor? Food for thought. Or does that really mean doctors are being going to be augmented by Watson's intelligence? Something to think about. Facebook reported in a peer-reviewed paper that technology can now recognize faces with 97% accuracy. I will put forward on the table 97% accuracy is much better than you and I can recognize faces from memory. This is amazing. According to Gartner, by 2018, 30% of our technology interactions, our interaction with technology, be it phone, be it our fridge, um, will be through conversations, not keystroke, not touches, not pens and styluses, but through conversations with smart machines. That brings me to the center part of this slide. Take a look at that graph. The y-axis on this graph shows the number of total devices uh, that are called IoT, Internet of Things, devices that are connected to each other. It can be uh, for example, your temperature sensor in the home, thermostat sensor, or or it can be, um, um, let's say, the uh, the refrigerator or the alarm clock or your cell phone or the machine that in automated homes now control the lighting, uh, the shades, the, the curtains. Um, so those the number of these devices that are proliferating our world today. X-axis, of course, is the year. Now, 2014 and 15 are estimates where 14 is gone, 15 is gone, we hit the estimate. Um, if you look at it, in 2015, there were upwards of near about 5 billion of these devices. Now, remember, connected devices, they talk to you just like we humans do. Next year, it's going to be about 10 billion of these devices that are going to talk to each other, independent of us. There will be more of these devices talking to each other than human beings on this planet. Are we, are we now in the age of robot, robotics? Is this the age where humans become extinct? Again, something to think about, discuss, and we'll do that towards the end of this lecture. Yeah. All right, some other things, drones, drones, drones. And more drones. We see drones everywhere. Drones are taking over from delivery of, of, of articles to uh, surveillance um, to bringing in equipment for medical emergencies, uh, taking dangerous jobs in nuclear plants uh, on, the, on our borders, keeping us safe. 2025, the vehicle, automobile, will be sophisticated enough to configure itself 
to a drive or another document. It will be able to learn, heal, drive, and socialize, talk to other vehicles and its surrounding environment. To some extent, the airplane does that today. Our modern aircrafts are highly automated. They do this today. And pretty soon, our cars will be doing the same. Is the driver extinct? Is it going to give us more time to do our work that we are wasting today in driving? Or is it going to take over our lives? According to Gardner, by 2018, the total cost of ownership of business operations will be reduced by 30%. 30% of our cost of doing business in next two years, three years, will be reduced through the use of smart machine services. I mean, the question really is, where is it taking us? Let's go to the next slide. Some of the disruptive technologies you can identify with, I already talked about surgery, wearable, the wearable devices, it's everywhere. Things that we wear on our arms, on our hands, we ingest. Uh, MIT has come up with this probe that one can ingest safely. It stays in, inside us for, for weeks and uh, it broadcasts all sorts of data, including uh, our trade and other things to make sure that they can patient. Cells, um, uh, robot delivered training programs, facial biometrics, virtual supermarket. Of course, it's here. It's with us today. Well, it's changing. Something that I'm really excited about: 3D printing. I'm a mechanical engineer. In the old days, we used to we used to visualize. We used to then draw it by hand and 3D, send it out for machining. They would do a machine drawing. They would build the part, the prototype. Prototype came back. It would be three to six months from the day we started thinking about it. We would look at it, and we would then say, oh, it doesn't work. These are the things that we need to change back to the drawing board. The entire cycle, the product cycle, was about a year, two years, 20 years in aerospace where I come from. 3D printing has changed it all. Today, I have a 3D printing printer at home. I, I, I visualize of, of machine parts in the morning. By afternoon, I have a 3D ready on the CAD system of the machine, push it off, go out, come back in the evening, the part is ready. Look at it, things that don't work, gets changed, back on the 3D printer, by the night, 12-hour cycle, I have my part that's functional, that's working, that's ready for production. Amazing. Building construction, we recently heard about 3D printing in a massive scale that can build buildings in 24 hours. Human parts. Um, it wasn't that long ago that we heard about a whole kidney being regenerated bit by bit, point by point, by a 3D printer. I think it's still in the future, uh, but it's not fiction, certainly. Food, who knows? One day we won't have to go to the grocery at all. Uh, it's all going to be um, uh, 3D printed in our home alone. Think about ordering from a restaurant. Boy, that would be easy. No delivery boys. Is that going to take the job away or is that going to change it so that our lives become better? Let's go to the next slide. So let's talk about what's happening in the IT service industry. I come from that now. Um, India is a major player in the services industry. Um, there's something coming up called intelligent automation evolution. Um, and the way it has worked through is in earlier days, we used to do scripting, write certain things which would automate certain actions. Today, we are in the days of what's called RPA, robotic process automation, which is taking over a slew of work that human beings do by hand today. Uh, for example, processing a claim or tellers, uh, it, it, ha it is being automated as we speak through RPA. Autonomics talked about self-healing, self-protected, and self-managed systems that we don't even have to care about. Finally, cognitive computing, something like Watson, simulates human thought process. Not only have robots taken over the physical side of what humans do, but they are invading and invading fast on our cognitive and again, is this for good or we are gonna go extinct? 
Uh, the next slide is about automation IT industry, and I have um, here a list of services that we provide today for just right, all the way from application services, infrastructure, business process outsourcing, data center. Not going to go through all of these, but as you can see, the RPA, the robotic process automation, cognitive automation, autonomics has invaded each one of these. Is this going to take away our jobs, or is this going to add more to our existence? Now let's talk about it. So what does automation really do? Well, it brings in better analytics. We have more data now to look at because of these machines talking to each other. We have more data that we can analyze. Well, who does that? Who interprets it? Humans do. The interpretation of, 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 of data, the understanding of patterns, the interrelation between the past and the future, most of that will still remain in the human realm. From a key puncher, we are getting into where we are more in the thought business. I think that's evolution. I think that's exciting. It's not taking jobs away. It's evolution, natural progression of our jobs. It's amazing. Highly consistent results. Of course, human beings make errors. Robots seldom do. Scalable. Doing three of these today, tomorrow I need 10. I can increase the number of robots. I do not have to train them because I can instantly share the software behind. Compliance, robots don't cheat, uh, at least today. Faster processing, minimal error, and of course, lower cost. So let's get back to the question that we started with. What's going to happen to us? Is iRobot equivalent to no humans? So I really think, um, and, and looking at the trends today, that um, that it's um, it's not elimination, but it's transformation of what we do. From from um, uh, working as a data entry person who is continuously keying the data. We have to evolve to the data interpretation level. We have to evolve to um, the, the, the higher cognitive functions uh, of, 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 human, of human being, of our existence. And that's where our future job is. That's where um, our future lies. And that's a good thing. That's exciting. We can do more of the design work. We can do more of the architecture work, the, um, um, the, the, the um, analytics, the correlation work, the construction of new ideas, the putting together of thoughts to build a new future, rather than be stuck in the mundane world um, of, um, of repeated, um, of repeated um, exercise and, and repeated um, actions that we do today. I think it's amazing. Future indeed is going to be changed by the disruptive technologies. And we call it automation. It has always been automation. That's not changing. What's changing is the pace and the domain. It used to be in the physical world. Now, Robots are invading in the cognitive world. We better be smarter than them, and we are. Um, of course, we have created them. So, um, so if I summarize it, um, robotics, and not just robotics, and as I said, it's not C3PO and R2D2. Robotics, in its true sense, doesn't have a body. Uh, it's um, it's a self-thinking. Uh, self-administered um, automaton. It's it's a, whether it be a software, whether it be um, a hardware uh, that helps us do the work that is by rote, is difficult, is dangerous. Uh, we might as well not do it. Uh, that's what robots uh, and automation is taking over and leaving us room to look in the future. 
uh, and perform the higher cognitive functions. Um, so, so um, we are almost at the end of the hour, and uh, uh, I will leave you all with the thought um, that transformation is inevitable. Automation is upon us. It's the age of the robots and humans with higher cognitive skills. It's our choice and really the choice of any every corporation in this world, every organization, every country, um, every human being. It's our choice um, whether we ride the wave and come up in front of it or we let ourselves drown. Um, thank you. So it's a favorite to topic of mine. It's, it's been a, um, I, I hope it's been a good half an hour for you. Um, hope, hope to see you all in the future. Talk to you again. Uh, I'm sure you can, you can submit questions to, uh, to the university. Would be happy to interact. Would be happy to uh, to 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 uh, get together one on one uh, to talk about it. Favorite topic as a technologist, as 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 an inventor, um, I love disruptions. Um, it's it's inevitable. It's part of our life. Thank you and and goodbye.